can walk. He can talk. And he's pretty friggin' strong. talking puppet killer directed by Lisa Ovis. In recent years we've seen a slew of what I would describe as plushy killer doll horror movies. We've had uh, Benny Loves You, uh, Willy's Wonderland, Banana Splits, just to name a few. Uh, this one was actually made I believe in 2016-2017, went on the festival circuit in 2019 but only now in 2021 getting a wide release. So although this seems like it's kind of like part of that slew of kind of pl killer plushy animal to cuddly toy films, it's actually a movie that was actually made, I, I believe, preceding all of those. Now, of course, we've seen plenty of kind of killer dolls and killer toy movies before. Things like Chucky, you know, the Puppet Master, things like this. But in recent years, it's been the kind of like the more brightly colored, you know, not deliberately scary looking kind of plushy creature, animal, toy, kind of horror movies that we've seen. So um, this is kind of that kind of subgenre of a subgenre, if you will. Uh, directed by Lisa, Lisa Ovis, I believe her uh, directorial uh, debut here, and she does have a role in the movie as well. There's also a few other kind of familiar faces that you'll know if you are a horror fan, including the, the Soska sisters who have uh, a supporting roles in the movie, but also a few other familiar faces as well. Now, this review is going to seem a little rambling because it's going to be... Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> when I'm talking about my negatives, I'm going to be harping on about a particular point. But let me talk about the positives and the uh, and the synopsis first of all, because then I'm really going to get my teeth into this one. Okay, so the plot is, uh, and then there's a there's a kind of an opening montage that kind of briefly kind of gives you this backstory, and, and I'm going to just go because it's all in the first like three minutes of the film. We have a young kid who is born to a mother who in, who loves horror movies, and she's sitting watching horror movies with her son from when he was a baby and she gives him this particular puppet as a kind of a you know a toy and we see a kind of a montage of them kind of growing up but at some point she develops cancer and passes away uh the dad later remarries and has a new wife who doesn't like all this kind of stuff and uh wants to get rid of this particular puppet and stop this kid from watching horror movies she mysteriously disappears Cut to 10 years later, are now 18, remember that age, because it's going to come into a, a point I'm making later on, 18-year-old uh, high school students have finished high school. They decide a bunch of them are going to go for Christmas in this cabin in the woods where Jamie, our main character, who is the kid in the, in the, kind of the prologue, uh, grew up and have a bit of a kind of like, you know, break away from everything. While they're there, they discover Simon, who is this puppet that Jamie used to have when he was a kid is actually there and there may be something going on with it the bodies start to pile up what will happen you have to watch the movie to find out okay that is your plot synopsis and trust me that is spoiler free so what do I think what do I like about this film okay so this is a horror movie made by horror fans for horror fans because there is a lot of knowing winks to the genre. This is a low budget movie uh, and, it, and it kind of does try to extend itself with, uh, you know, flashy special effects that don't work. I think the effects work actually, for the context of the movie, works fine. But what it does have is a lot of homages, a lot of in-jokes that takes kind of uh, scenes or characters or kills from horror films and kind of does a comedic version of them in this movie. This is a horror comedy, and again, this is a point I'll be coming back to in, in a short while, so just remember that. And there are some funny kind of references to the main kind of like uh, slasher films and other kind of like uh, small, mainly kind of like more well-known horror films. Uh, you know, everything from, uh, you know, the Friday the 13th to, to Poltergeist. Uh, everything's pretty, all the kind of the big ones are kind of referenced, a lot, a lot of the big ones are. So fans of horror films will enjoy these funny gags that are kind of, uh, you know, that are kind of at the kind of uh, the expense of all these kind of horror movies of the past. 
I think horror fans will enjoy seeing some familiar faces. As I've mentioned, the Soska sisters, for example, uh, Richard Hammond has been in a bunch of stuff, and a few other kind of uh, uh, familiar faces as well. I do think the movie kind of is relatively kind of well shot. I like the fact that they've used a, a kind of a winter setting with this kind of snowy uh, backdrop, and I always think kind of you know when we have blood on snow, it kind of looks quite effective, quite dynamic looking. Um, so I have to say, I think the kind of the movie is reasonably well shot for the kind of the low budget movie that it is. And I did like some of the, some, some of the character dynamics. So there's a particular character that I like who was one of the friends, I forget the character's name, Guy with the Beard. Him and his younger brother, I thought were the most interesting film. And I do think some of the gags are funny. Uh, there are gags that directly reference horror films, like I've mentioned. But there are also other gags as well that I just thought were just funny because they were funny. For example, we have a goth kid and, you know, he's kind of there listening to his music and we can hear the music through his headphones. And the lyrics are just going, die, 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 die. Which, I, again, it was just funny to me. Um, so that's what I think works. So let's talk about what I think doesn't work. And here we go. Um, we have to talk about tone before I go into this. I have to question what tone this movie is trying to go for, because this is going to be a big point for you, and it might seem like I'm picking on some, some one decision that was made in this movie, but to me, it informs the rest of the movie. It's a horror comedy, as I've mentioned. So comedy, by its nature, is somewhat subjective. So what I find funny, someone else isn't going to find funny, and vice versa. So comedy in general can be difficult. Um, people like different types of comedy. A lot of people don't like my sense of humour, if you can believe that. The crazies. Anyway, but um, so this movie is obviously going for a comedic tone. Now, the tone for the majority of the movie, I would say, is kind of like a, you know, a knowing kind of, uh, you know, horror comedy slasher film where you have some kind of in-jokes that are, you know, that are kind of referencing previous kind of uh, horror movies, but makes sense in the kind of the context of the film because our antagonist, you know, this, this, this doll who may well be, you know, coming to life, is, has grown up watching these horror films. And so it kind of makes sense through wise that that's there, and that's all kind of fine. And you know, some, of the, some of the kind of the horror, some of the kind of the horror comedy elements work well, work naturally, seeing... Like, yes, it's kind of a somewhat kind of comedic, uh, comedic kind of vibe, but so, nonetheless, it doesn't kind of like make it too spoofy or too silly at any one point. So you can still feel this is, it plays very much like a standard slasher film, apart from one decision. One decision in this movie that I feel is so different to anything else in the film. Now, if I compare, for example, Scary Movie versus Ghostbusters. Two horror comedies, very different tone. So we've got an out-and-out -out spoof in Scary Movie and a horror comedy which has some funny moments, some funny witty lines, some comedic elements, but the story you can kind of still follow as a kind of a, a, a narrative. This movie, for the most part, is like that kind of Ghostbusters style. Maybe a little bit more spoof, goofy than that, but... You know, it's more or less a kind of a, you know, that kind of narrative. But there's one thing in here that they've decided to do that is pure scary movie spoof. Now, there's a trope in Hollywood, not just horror films, to cast older actors to play teenagers. It's a thing that's happened, you know, throughout history. And nowadays, I believe, less so, but or not quite as old. But they've made it a decision here to cast... And I'm being literal when I say this, 50-year-old actors to play 18-year-old high school students. Literally, 50-year-old actors. And not even, like, bothering to try to make them look younger, they're just 50-year-old actors. Um, our main guy, who plays Jamie, is like a six-foot-four bloke, you know, losing his hair a bit, stubble, playing an 18 year old it, and, that, and that's obviously meant to be like a gag at this um, the kind of like the, the trope of uh, of casting older people 
but it's it's so like it's so spoofy and, and, and silly, it's unlike any other joke in the movie. And it really stands out as an odd decision to have this one kind of joke which is so outlandish. But the problem is here, it's not just a joke that is one and done, it's that they're there for the whole film. So you're, meant to, you're sitting here trying to follow a narrative where you're watching a 50 year old actor trying to play an 18 year old, but it doesn't even stop there. Our main character of Jamie, we have a 50 year old guy playing an 18 year old character but acting like a 12 year old with learning difficulties. So as funny as that joke might sound, when you're watching a whole movie with these kind of characters, you just you just simply can't get into the characters. Uh, or, at least, or at least I couldn't. So I'm watching this and I'm, I just can't I just can't really buy into the characters. Even a comedy movie should have characters. And again, I use Ghostbusters. Think about how great those characters were. I know that's a really high standard, but there are, there are movies that are, that are lesser that you could still point to that do this. You still have to have characters that we, we as an audience connect with. And I'll use a spoof movie, right? Even the superhero movie, right? Which is uh, obviously not a horror one. That, the main protagonist is basically a kind of a spoof of the, the original, like, Raimi Spider-Man film. But even that, which is a spoof movie, had a likeable, relatable main character that we as an audience could still follow this journey on. Yes, there were some sort of, like, very outlandish gags, but we still had that sort of connection to the, the character. We could still recognise ourselves in, in the character to a certain degree. This, certainly with our main character, you cannot, um, or at least I couldn't. So therefore, I simply couldn't buy into the character. I think it was a mistake. If they wanted to have a commentary on casting older people, maybe you'd cast a 30 year old and have a comment saying, you look really old for someone who's 18. Casting a, a 50 year old and then not commenting on it, to me was, it, it kind of spoiled the film if I'm honest, that one joke. Um, because it's not, as I say, it's not a one and done. You're, you're watching these characters through the whole film. And you can't even pretend he's like a 50-year-old because he's playing an 18-year-old but singing more like a 12-year-old. It's just, it was a horrible decision. Anyway, so that's that. So that's my opinion on, the, on that, which it, it, it torpedoed the movie, in my opinion. Now, I, I've mentioned, um, even though this, I believe, was made before... And I'm going to use uh, Benny Loves You as the nearest comparison. So that's the closest film to this. Benny Loves You, I, I felt, was a far better movie in regards to its comedy, its set pieces, the actual character of the, of the puppet. Um, that worked a lot better. I mean, no, that had its own problems. But to me, that worked a lot better than this one in regards to uh, having a, a, an interesting puppet, you know, antagonist. There's an attempt here to kind of, um, at least initially, make you think, is it the puppet or is it Jamie's character secretly kind of being a serial killer? Uh, and that's kind of um, touched upon at the end. But it's kind of, as, a, as the film goes on, we as the audience will find out pretty soon what the real truth is. Uh, I don't think the kills are all that you know, exciting. Another route they could have gone is having this to be particularly kind of gory and stuff. They don't. They're kind of standard, sort of low-budget slasher kills. Some of them are off-screen. Um, as much as I kind of like some of the characters, there are some fairly bland characters here as well. There's some things that are introduced that are, are kind of nothing is done with. There's a couple of other male characters, and it's kind of suggested that they, they kind of like... Uh, might have a secret kind of like gay relationship. It, it, it's, it's kind of brought up and then never, nothing is ever kind of done about it or kind of like a, sort of resolved either way. Why bring it up, you know? Um, so it ends up being somewhat of a standard horror comedy slasher movie with some funny gags in regards to homages to horror films, which I do enjoy. And I do think horror fans will like that one. Those, those kind of smaller jokes that are kind of, I say, one and done. You know, we see the puppet with a, you know, a Jason mask, for example, or he's got a Freddy claw. Uh, and then it moves on to the next scene. 
funny moves on to the next game but it works in the in the context of the film because the puppet has been sitting watching horror films its whole existence however that decision to have this kind of character or the characters be cast them so old is it derails the film in a way that I feel uh, at least for me significantly kind of like lost my interest because any kind of suspension of disbelief I can kind of put towards a you know some of the small maybe the jokes or the silly kind of things that maybe this movie has you can still buy them in the context of this kind of universe but that one thing I just couldn't get over it I just couldn't get over it it was in my opinion very misjudged and then and, and doubled down with the, with the performance here that I do not think was um, really helped because it, so it sort of doubles down on that kind of like, you know, we've got a, a, a guy, you know, he looks like he's from um, of mice and men, meaning to meaning to play like a, uh, an eighteen year old college student. It's 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 just a bizarre choice. I just don't understand it. Um, I, I guess on paper it seemed funny, but the problem is you've got to watch that character for the whole film. It's not like a one and done joke, like the kind of like the things as I've said. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling about that one. It may not bother some people, honestly. Um, you know, looking at some of the reviews from the festival circuit, a lot of people thought it was funny. To me, it, it wasn't. Um, so I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 10. I just thought that was... Had it not had that, I think it would have been probably a slightly above average movie, but it, to me, really torpedoed the movie. Um, so it's a 4 out of 10 for me, uh, I was kind of wanting to like this more but I just couldn't, I can't do it. Uh, 4 out of 10, have you seen it? Would you see it? If you haven't, leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.